Peace of the family, peace of the family. How's everybody doing in the chat? It's gonna be an amazing show tonight. I want y'all to get comfortable. As usual, hit the like button. Tell your friends and family it's going down tonight. I got a legend, a living legend in the building. Um, as usual, I'm gonna get before I bring my guests on, we're gonna get to a quick commercial. Uh, so we'll do that in the meantime. Tell your friends and family, hit the like button. We, we it's going down tonight. All right, family, we'll be back in uh one second. All right, just glad that y'all here, y'all joining. Okay, be right back, family. It's the numerovational session with King Simon. Text your full name and date of birth to 347-496-1022. That's 347-496-1022. And get my books on Amazon now. All right, all right. Move over. Right here, right here, right here. Right here. Let's turn it down. Good. Hmm? You're just I'm adjusting ready. my. Yeah, take your time. Take your time, brother. Let the uh, brother adjust <clears throat> uh, what he has to adjust as far as technology is concerned. Uh, you know, everything's going to be worth the wait tonight. Uh, we'll be on for a little over an hour tonight, uh, family. So, um, yeah, it is what it is. Thanks for joining us, though. I definitely appreciate everybody coming out tonight on this Wednesday night. We just had Wayne Chandler yesterday, so I'm glad y'all came out tonight to enjoy this. <clears throat> you, you ready to get started, brother? I'm ready. All right. So without further ado, family, this is the first time this brother's on the show. Uh, let me just tell you a little bit about this brother for those, the younger brothers and sisters in the, in the, in the audience who may not know, uh, Raul Nefa Amen. Uh, is the founder and chief priest um, of the Saw Set Society. Uh, that society is dedicated to providing Afrocentric based spiritual training to people of African descent, focusing on comedic philosophy and spiritual culture. This brother is also a trained concert pianist, a composer. I mean, he has authored over 40 works, over 100 musical compositions. He's also known as Shechem or Shechem. I hope I said that right. But the brother is a living legend. And it's a pleasure for me to finally get him on the show. I want to thank the sister Monique from Nicholas for assisting me in getting him on the show. Um, without further ado, Raul Nef Amen. Welcome to the platform, my brother. Thank you for having me. Indeed, indeed. So uh wow we got a short amount of time but a lot of lot to talk about <laughs> um i want to start out could you tell us a little bit about yourself and what exactly is your mission here uh in terms of your movement and everything that you got going on right now my brother thank you very much thank you for having me and uh peace and blessings to your audience and uh well a little bit about myself uh, I'm the head of a organization called the Osada Set Society. Mm -hmm. We have 50 years, you know, completing our 50 years this year. And I started the society <clears throat> to provide spiritual guidance, especially mm -hmm. to African Americans and Black people around the world. Um, because the thing is that, you know, you just cannot put spiritual teaching in the book. Yes, and tell people to go for themselves. Mm -hmm. You got to help them provide a structure, mm -hmm. a social framework, mm -hmm. so that they can have the support and the rewards, you know, of a group activity. So, in a nutshell, that's what I've been doing, and I've been blessed, you know, to be able to to brought our teachings. We have uh, chapters, over forty chapters around the world. We're, we're an international organization. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of the members have been with us for the 50, 40, 25 years and so. Mm -hmm. So that is, you know, gives us that expertise to assist, you know, people with the, with the spiritual work. <clears throat> Indeed. I'm still here. Yes, sir. Yeah. So um, 
What I want to know is um, to the name of tonight's show, I titled it Com Comedic Solstice Meditations. Um, then in parentheses, I talked about the untold story of 14 chakras. To start out, well, to start out with simply, I want to know why do you spell? I've been studying and researching Kemet for a very, 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 very long time, brother. To start out with, very simple question. Why do you spell Kemet differently from the way I've been studying and researching Kemet for the last 15 years? Why do you spell it the way that you spell it? There has to be a science behind that, my brother. I don't know. I spell it K-A-M-I-T. Yes. Kham. Yes. Because that's the way they spell it. That's the way they wrote it. Mm. You know, there are books, you know, like... Um, are you getting to from? Um, it's, 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 it's a little choppy. It's a little choppy. Okay. A little choppy. Yeah. yeah. Let me see if I can adjust the audio here. That's the way the ancient Egyptian wrote the word K A M I T. And Kam means black. Mm -hmm. So Kam it means the land of the blacks. You see? And, uh, and Kam in Egypt. You know, corresponds to the Ham in the Bible. You know, the, the son of the, the black son of Noah, it's Ham, mm -hmm. and his and his sons were Mitzrayim, which is Egypt. That's according to the Bible. Okay, so I spell it Ham because that's the way the ancient Egyptians wrote it. And black and, and in their books, the name for themselves is Kam O, meaning black people. Mm -hmm. You see, so. Um, that's a simple answer. That's the way to spell it. Real quick, as far as the echo, do you have multiple computers on? No, I only have one computer on here. Just the one you're using, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, it's not that bad, but I can hear it. I just was wondering if you had um more echoes on. I mean more computers on. Uh so so let's so let's get started. So, like I said, comedic solstice meditation. You have this program and you talk a lot about. And you emphasize, number one, you emphasize the importance that there's more than seven chakras. You talk about how um, when the Aryans invaded India, they purposely left some of the so-called so chakras out. So we got to talk about that. And we also got to talk about the solstice that we're about to experience. Um, when we refer to the holy days, we a lot of people think about the Christmas season, but it goes way deeper than that. And you explain that and you go in depth in that. And how important is that to our, uh, our our biological avatar that we call the human body? So let's start out with, since we're in December, today is December 20th. Let's start out with the winter solstice. What should we as a people, modern times, know about the solstice that our ancestors in antiquity knew about solstice that we may not know and that you teach in your program, my brother? Please. Go very good. Me. Very good beginning here. Yes. Because tomorrow is the beginning of the solstice, right? Oh, perfect time. The 21st. Yes. Now, let's start with why the solstice is so important. Yes. When we go into Egypt, we find that the, um, the Great Pyramid of Giza by the King Khufu, which is the largest pyramid ever built, the question is why was it built? The cost of that pyramid would be measured in billions of dollars in today's money. You see? Mm -hmm. That pyramid is clock. It's a celestial clock. Celestial clock. It, Amazing. Yes. It's a way of marking time so that they will know when a specific date that was very important came about. Mm -hmm. You see that? Mm -hmm. One of the greatest accomplishments of ancient civilizations ancient Egypt, ancient Black India, you know, the Taoist people of China and so on, was the discovery of the bio cycle. Every function in our body, our psyche, our mind, our spirit, is on a biological, psychological clock. Uh -huh. Meaning that, you know, let's take your blood pressure. Your blood pressure doesn't remain the same all day long or all year long. It, it fluctuates. It, it waxes and wanes. See that your blood pressure, you know, reaches its maximum 
around three o'clock in the afternoon and its lowest point around 3 a.m. in the morning. And that is true for all of our functions, the wax and the wheel. The ability to, to get the best, you know, restful sleep, the ability to digest your food, all of these things move up and down in a cyclical manner. Now, one of the most worthy ancient Egyptians and ancient civilization considered to be most important was your ability to grow spiritually and your ability to achieve your goals in this world. Those abilities don't move in the same way every day of the year. They go up and they go down cyclically within the period of the year. And there's a time to impress your psyche, okay, which is the executive part of your, of your being. The psyche is the part of your being that carries out your will, your dictates, your mandates, you know, it's the part that executes your desires, your plans, your projects. And the time of the year that your psyche is most receptive to receiving these mandates from your will is the winter solstice. Ah, okay. Meaning that the three months of the winter, beginning tomorrow, the winter solstice, the next three months, your psyche will focus, you see that, on renewing your plans. You see that, we will focus on resetting your mind and your body to help you to carry better carry out your your plans and so that's why you know people who equate the the function of the winter forces for january 1st the new year meaning that the people who ancient people celebrated the sources that was the new year oh, okay. the new year for ancient people was the end of the sources which is december 25th the Romans changed the calendar and made it earlier January 1st. But that is why people today have this belief that you must pledge to be different, to be better, to have a better life at the new year. Because that is when your psyche becomes most receptive to being impressed and impregnated with your desires, your plans, and your objectives for the year. You see that? If, if you begin to plan your year, let's say, on March the 5th, it's too late. Your site is not ready, ready past that receptivity time. You see that? Okay? Now, it's March, starting March the 21st, your site for the next three months is, able, is ready to improve its ability to carry out and execute your plans. But the winter months is when the site begins to receive the messages to change your life for the year. You're saying you psych? Ready? You're saying psych? What are you saying? You're saying psych? P F Y C H E. P F Y C H E. Okay, psych. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Psych. Psychology. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Meaning that your psych is the part that carries out your will, your desires, yeah. your plans. Yeah. And it receives that message. This is in the winter months starting with December the 21st, probably called the winter solstice. Mm hmm. So, meaning that the winter time is the most important time, those three months, is the most important time for you to, to hand over to your psyche, the psychological part of your being, you see? We, 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 in ancient times, they call it your soul. You see that? Mm. That's the I, time that your psyche soul. or your soul receives the message to grow you spiritually and accomplish your goals. You want to change your life, you want to be healthier, you want to make more money, you want to, you know, improve your relationships, you know, whatever you want to achieve, your psych is in charge of carrying it out, making it happen. But the time of the year that your cycle is ready for this message, most receptive to this message, you know, are the winter months beginning with December the 21st. And that's based on our biological clock. A biological clock. The best time to go to sleep is 11 p.m. The best time to eat your meal, your heaviest meal is, you know, um, late midday. You see that the best time for you to cram, for example, is 
you know, in the morning, mid morning, the best time for you to study for simulation, you know, is midday and so on. But let me ask the best time for you to do endurance and strength exercises and not hurt the body is midday. Midday. It's called the biological clock on the books, on the internet, you know, biological clocks, you know, wow. from the biology and so on. Because, you know, a lot of people, time, huh? wrong, wrong enough, I'm sorry, a lot of people start their day working out early in the morning. So you you saying that's not the time to work out. You saying midday we should work out? Like, what if I hit the gym at six in the morning? That's not the proper time to hit. The, based no, on my sir. biological, no, no? sir, no, wow. sir. Okay. Chronobiology is an ancient science, and, and there are many books. There are probably some twenty books in the market that you can you know, biological clocks. You know, your bio not biorhythms, but by chronobiology and biological clock that will teach you. You know, the best time for you to best utilize your bodily functions. And the oh. most important function that you have is to become wealthy, healthier, more powerful, and the time to, 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 to give that mission to your sight, to your soul, is the winter months, starting with the winter solstice. Mm -hmm. So you, we don't we don't have we don't have an alarm system that goes off within us that says, "Hey, this is the best time to eat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is the uh, best time to exercise." Yeah. So you you miss it. Yeah, and you get sick. And you never know why. Wow. But the thing is, but well, you don't have a, you don't have an alarm system that tells you, oh, this is the best time of the year for you to tell your psych that you, you want to be a millionaire this year. You you're gonna go for it. Mm. You see that, okay? Because mm. your psych will work to make it happen if you tell it if you tell your psych to do it during the winter months at the right okay. time. Exactly. So. <laughs> Yeah, you get the message. Oh, but that. listen, listen, hold up. I've been taught by a lot of other people in consciousness or whatever you want to call it that the new year in antiquity started in March, spring. It's the new year. The flowers grow, the sun is out, and everything is blooming. They say that's the new year. Shechem, Shechem. They don't say the winter solstice, they say March. What do you have to say about that? Well, before. You can have a child, that's the spring, the blooming, the coming into the world. Yeah. You're going to plant the seed. And it has to stay a couple of months on the ground. <laughs> there you go. There you go. We skipping. We skipping the process, huh? Hey, and that's why we're in trouble. Yeah, we skipping. Okay. Oh, that was beautiful. That is beautiful. We skipping the process. Wow. What do you think about, based on, you know, you're talking about time, you're very educated about our bio clocks. And um, I've heard you mention several things in your lectures about, um, uh, I, I forgot the word, the, 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 the ley lines of the earth, all types of stuff. What do you think about the idea of humanity implementing in Western culture daylight saving times? How does that throw off the winter solstice, everything we got going on, daylight saving time? Because we go through it every year, a couple of times, two times a year, I believe. Yeah, well, not every, not all nations observe daylight saving time. You know? Western culture, though, Western culture. Yeah, we're, you know, well, you know there's, there's a healthy discussion about getting rid of it. Yeah. Because they found out it's creating, creating a lot of psychological and health problems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because people are now out of rhythm. Mm -hmm. they're, they're out of sync with their biological and psychobiological, you know, um, clock. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're discovering it. Mm -hmm. That's why, for example, people who work at night, Mm -hmm. Right, the night shift, mm -hmm. they get a differential wage. They get the fifteen percent, you know, higher wage than the people do the same work during the day. Yeah. Why? Because if you work at night where you're supposed to be sleeping, you're gonna have more accidents, more illness, and so on. Uh -huh. They know it. Wow. And the amount that extra money they give you is not worth the damage you're doing to your health. Yeah. And cutting your longevity short. Indeed. Wow. So, so you talk a lot about meditation. Meditation is this huge billion dollar industry in this country. Um, a lot of the melanated brothers and sisters haven't really tapped into meditation as a lot of other cultures have as yet due to religion and our, and our, you know, in Christianity, not to not Christianity, but, you know, religion has taught a lot of us that meditation has a certain level of evil in it and whatnot. But I want to ask about a certain level of evil, like it's like, you know, um, meditation is not 
you know, you supposed to pray. You don't supposed to meditate. That's what a lot of our people feel as though meditation is something, you know, it's something a little wrong with it or whatever. Same way they feel about astrology and thing, numerology and things like that. Um, what I want to ask you, brother, in terms of meditation. Uh, so I guess during this winter solstice, since this is the new year and you said if you want to be a millionaire, you supposed to uh, um, tell your psyche or your soul that around this time. I guess meditation is very important at this time, and that leads us to a lot of things you talk about, like kundalini yoga and this chakra thing that you talk about. So how important is meditation during the, the winter solstice month right now? Well, I'm going to give you some facts that you can check on the internet, right? Yes. Scientists have studied people, people who meditate a lot, uh -huh. and they found that meditation removes and invigorates the brain. Mm -hmm. which is the most important tool that you have, your brain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay? We find, for example, that meditation, when you meditate, you enter into a brain wave set that we call the alpha wave, you know, uh, cycle, mm -hmm. where the brain slows down its electrical activity to about uh, between 7 and 13 beats per second. Mm -hmm. And then when the brain is moving, you know, at that level, at that pace, you know, your perception and your cognitive abilities broaden. Your IQ rises. They say that. Okay, in the past 50 years, I've written over 40 books, over 100 musical compositions, you know, all through, you know, the power of meditation. Mm -hmm. So meditation is a way of you access, accessing the higher powers of your brain. Right, and the thing is, is that when you want to deal with people telling you don't meditate, you know, look at look at the quality of their lives, mm -hmm. the morality, the intelligence, the accomplishments, and look at ancient Egypt, okay, which is you know, um, it's a, a culture that used meditation to a very high degree. Look at their they accomplished the highest level of civilization than any other group of people. Mm -hmm. You see that? Mm -hmm. Indeed. So, um, one of the things that you talk about that I, I that I'm not too familiar with, um, I've heard several speakers touch on it vaguely, but you stress that there are 14 chakras instead of seven. So, I want to. Um, you have a deep understanding about the the history of India when it got invaded, when certain systems got merged. So a lot of us, like I've, I was, I was even taught uh, around Nefar men that the piano notes in the scale, C D E F G A B, those are seven notes. Those seven notes align with the seven chakras. So when you play the piano notes, you're tapping into each chakra, and then it goes to the next octave again. That's the, you know, that's it's the same thing. It's just higher octaves of the same scale. So with me, my knowledge and a lot of people's knowledge of seven chakras seven piano notes you're saying there's 14 chakras please explain to us where you get this information from because this is new to a lot of us my brother first of all the alignment there's a so-called correspondence between the seven notes in an octave and there's really 12 notes and not seven notes no know. seven notes in a the scale there's 12 notes in the octave but there's seven notes in a scale well, they depend on what, well, if you talk about the, the diatonic major scale. Yeah, yeah, it depends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you talk yeah. about seven notes, right? You talk about the major scale, yeah. The diatonic scale. Yeah. Okay, the, the, the pentatonic scale with five notes, for example, yeah. which is very big in China yes. and the Oriental world and so on. Mm -hmm. Okay? And, and we can talk about the seven notes in the scale. You're talking about, you know, the Western world temperate clavier system, mm -hmm. not talking about a universal system. Mm -hmm. The seven note scale is a Western invention. Mm -hmm. When you go all over the world, you find that they have scales with more than seven notes or less than seven notes. Mm -hmm. You see that? Mm -hmm. Now the so-called allocation of the, the, the seven diatonic notes of a major scale to the, uh, to the chakras mm -hmm. was done by the Rosicrucians you know, back in the um, medieval ages, you see that? Mm -hmm. But it has never been proven, mm. okay? What has been proven, for example, which explains why the Chinese with the pentatonic scale, mm. you know, it's, it, 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 are you a musician, by the way? 
Am I what? A musician. Yes, I am. Yes. Okay, so you know you know the circle of fish. Yes, I do. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. Right, right. C you know. G uh D A E uh B. Uh you know, you just go on fifths. North, fifths, yeah. North five notes that yes. make up the pentatonic scale, the, the, the circle of fifths. Yeah. The diatonic notes. Yes. Correspond to the five psychical chakras. Mm. You see that? Mm. But and it's not a scale sequence, it's a cycle of fifth sequence. Fifth sequence. Wow, okay. You see that? Oh okay, with the tonic corresponds to the earth element, the centering element of the tonic within you. Yes. You see that. And when you when you compose your your your, your, your meditation music based on the cycle of fifths, mm -hmm. knowing you know what chap what psychical chakra to allocate. You mm. see that to the mm. uh, to the notes of the you know the circle of fifths, then you get the psychical effect from these chanted mantras. But what I want to say to you is this: here. if you go, you know, this book called Laya Yoga, L A Y A Yoga. Mm. Okay, it, it's a book that not too many people that are interested in meditation know about. Mm -hmm. So you probably can find it on Amazon for maybe five six hundred dollars. Say that name one more time. Say that name one more time, my brother. Laya, L A Y A, yoga. Yoga, yeah. Yeah, you, you, you probably heard of Hatha Yoga and Raja Yoga. Okay, but not technically heard about Laya Yoga. Mm -hmm. Okay, I forgot the author's name, but the book gives you all the 14 chakras. You can go and Google the 14 chakras. It's published, this is published information. Mm -hmm. You know, the chakras with their mantras and everything and so forth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that we have five psychical chakras and nine spiritual chakras. Okay. You see that? And, uh, and, it's, and it's, it's published. It looks like it's not like I didn't make this up. This has been documented for thousands of years. Right. Part of the shamanic tradition. Right. The reason for this is that when the Aryan came into ancient India, Mm -hmm. Ancient India was a matrilineal society, and God was a goddess in ancient India. So the the, the patriarchal Aryans they cannot they cannot vibe with that. So they changed the system and limited to the five lower psychical chakras because the five lower the the, 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 the when we talk about psychical powers, the the, the ability for your life force, the Kundalini energy to generate effects in, in miraculous effects on mind over matter effects in your life is controlled by the five lower chakras, which, you know, um, the people who invented the so-called seven chakra system told you that you will come, that you will control, okay, the, the five psychical chakras with the Ajna chakra, which they incorrectly call the third eye, and the Sahasra chakra, nobody ever told you how what the mantras of the Sahasra chakras are. There are 50 mantras in the Sahasra chakra, and nobody has written a book on how to use that. Mm. Wow. And the thing is, 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 is you know, uh, you know, when I, I wrote the, a book, you know, Life and Kundalini Yoga years ago, okay, where I gave the explanation of all. Uh, well, of nine of the 14 chakras, I didn't want to give the other five chakras. I wanted to uh, put it in a separate book by itself, okay, because it, it, it's really a book on psychology. Right. Yes, it's a mental psychology and so on. Mm -hmm. So, so um, um, all right. So the Aryans invade India. They purposely left out certain chakras dealing with the female aspect of man. What I want to ask you, I'm just, cause it's like, okay, why would they leave out those chakras? Is it a case of someone hating something because they don't have it? So what they don't have, nobody can have. Is this something that was exclusive to the people that were India in that time? We have invaders, they come through. They don't have access to these chakras, so they gonna hate on it because they don't have access to it. Is this no, no, not really? The, why why the did other they nine, out? Why the did other they... nine chakras, the other nine chakras, require for you to 
observe very strict and stringent mm. spiritual rules. Mm. Mm. The lower five chakras, which are the chakras that enable you to manifest mind over matter, does not require spirituality or morality. Mm. So it's easier for you to use the five lower chakras. Right. You see that. <clears throat> the problem, you know, with it is that, you know, um, go on Google, go on Amazon, and see how many books, you know, you can find that explains how to use the powers of the chakras and the, and the heart in the books. Mm. You see that? Yet if you get my book, Light of Kundalini, I give you all the mantras of all the nine spiritual chakras. Mm. You see that? And in this, and in my course that I'm, that I'm giving to the world this year, I teach people how to use, you know, um, the Guru Chakra. You, you never heard of the Guru Chakra, right? No. The word, the word Guru is, you know, spiritual teacher sage, right? So mm -hmm. there's a Guru, you have a chakra within you that once you open it up, you're able to get divine guidance intuitively. You see, connect with God's wisdom. Mm. Okay, one of the five lower chakras, one of the so-called, uh, uh, one of the so-called seven chakras called the Vishuddha, mm. purifies your lower chakra. You see that? It enables you to transcend, you know, the control that pleasure exerts over you. Mm. You see that? Meaning that one of the biggest problems that people have today is that they're pleasure bound. Yes. They, they are enslaved to pleasure. <clears throat> they, will, they will not do something unless it is pleasurable, and they are addicted to a lot of dangerous and bad pleasures and things of that nature. And they be shuva. The word shuva, shudi, means to purify. Like in Nadi Shudi Pranayama, when you do that, the, the alternate mode of breathing to purify the, the energy channels. Mm -hmm. But you got to do it with the shuva mantra. Mm. Okay, just not to the top of one of those and the other. You can also, you, you have to also now empower the Vishuddha chakra to purify the energy channels and so on. So that's part of the seven, the so-called seven chakras. Why haven't they explained that? Mm. You see that? No, definitely. You can go through, and then no, one of the so-called seven chakras that controls people's life is called the Swadhisthana chakra, into what we call the sex chakra, okay? And that's the chakra that, that empowers your mind to manifest your desires and your life plans. Mm. So this is what I teach in this, you know, um, uh, course on the winter solstice because come the New Year, whether you, is, you, you call it December 25th or January 1st, when you start to make pledges for a better life, Mm. It, it's not going to happen through just you writing a piece of paper, I pledge to accomplish, so I pledge to change so and so in my life. You have to go through uh, a, a deep dive into your soul, you know, with meditations and words of powers, mantras, because that's what your chakras are. That's what they decide. They see that. Uh, my, my brother, Shekum Shekum, can you turn your speaker down a little? Can you try turning your speaker down a little? Okay. Let me, see, let me see if that helps the audio. This is real good stuff, man. I'm having a great time. I'm glad you came on here. I really want the people to hear and understand because I, I can hear you good, but um, I just want it to be even better. Yes, I was concerned about it earlier. How's this now? S -s -s Say that again. What you said? I was concerned about the, 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 the feedback oh. earlier. And you're still hearing it? I think that sounds a little better. I think that that sounds definitely sounds a little better. I don't know about a lot. If we, well, let, let's keep talking, but that definitely sounds a little better. Let me ask you this. Like I said, great conversation, amazing conversation. I'm glad to have you on here, man. Um, so you said I asked you that question about the Aryans, and you said that it's harder to tap into these um chakras, these feminine chakras, harder to tap into them. Uh, what I want to ask you, in modern times, one of the biggest complaints by women in our society is that men are unable, the men that the man that they are with are, is, is unable to tap into his feelings, his emotions, his, his, you know, express himself. 
uh, uh, um, articulate how he feels. Is this the same problems the Arians was having in terms of tapping into these chakras and expressing certain things? Is this a modern time example of what happened in antiquity, my brother? Absolutely. Can you hear me now? You. We still get this feedback. I don't know, something yeah. went worse. Let me see. Can you, are you hearing the feedback? No, I'm not hearing that right now. I'm not hearing it. I'm not hearing feedback right now. Your screen got a little blurrier. But when the audience right came, now. you didn't hear that, that, that feedback at all? No, I don't hear feedback. I don't hear feedback. When? Well, you're not hearing the echo, right? No, you good. You good to go. I, I think okay. you good to go, brother. When the Aryans invaded e India, you know, which the, the, the tradition, the yogis are calling themselves the Shramans, mm -hmm. and the majority of the priestesses were in charge. It was they had a queen model, mm -hmm. it was a matriarchal society, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and a lot of the teachings, the, the powers of the man, what they call the chakras was, you know, the, the, the spiritual female principle, okay? And that's one of the reasons why the system was changed because the, the patriarchal Aryans could not tolerate, you know, a female priest, priesthood in charge of the highest teachings of the land. So they changed it up. So what people get into it as yoga, especially the meditation part of yoga, you know, it's a patriarchal, male-dominated, you know, uh, perspective. I'm sorry, I had it on oh. mute. No, I, I had my mic on mute. Uh, one of the things that you said is quite interesting is um, you talked about the emotion of joy. And you said that joy is solar, solar energy. Could you explain that? Uh, we're familiar with solar energy. We're familiar with the sun, the expression of joy. Because there's a lot of expressions, but you said joy in particular. Could you elaborate on that, my brother? In the physical world, sunlight yeah. is what energizes life. Yeah. You see that? Uh -huh. In your being, uh -huh. the emotion of joy uh -huh. has the same you know, quality at sunlight mm. does. Mm. So if you want to energize your psyche, your thoughts, your vision, imaginations, your physical well-being, cultivate joy to the point right. where you experience eternal joy. Right. Meaning that you're always joyful and right. nothing can take it away from you. There's right. such an ability, you know, your, your psyche and your spirit has the ability to remain in a state of joy. Right. Joy is not something you operate with sadness and pain or whatever. Mm -hmm. But the moment that you have sadness and, and anger and worry and grief, those are toxic and poisonous. It blows your IQ. It mm -hmm. damages your health, your vitality. It destroys the, your, your visions of success. So there's no place. You have no need for mm -hmm. grief and joy. I mean, grief and worry and angry. You have no need for those things. They're toxic. You know, the medical science has very well documented that these emotions are very destructive to your well-being and to your psychological and social well-being. So you have to learn to master the art of um... You good. You better now. I seen... Uh, go ahead. I, I know, I know I what's going on. I see another screen says the easiest way to live and record you had you had two things at the bottom of our screen i just got one on one that might have been the echo so keep going i think you better now we'll go. keep going brother but the, the, the screen go. has been replaced by another screen yeah. about the easiest way you good to, to go live. brother. don't worry about that you good to go brother okay I, so i'm saying to your person that you know we have the ability to cultivate you know uh 
unending joy, which we call happiness. Yeah. Happiness is a state of perpetual joy that you can achieve through, you know, a certain meditation programs, which is part of what I teach. Indeed. Hey, I want to uh, real quick before I ask the next question, I want to give a, I want to give a shout out because I fixed the audio problem. I want to give a shout out to Centurion. Centurion said him with the magic, Rich. When you said that, my brain went into ways to fix the problem. So if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have figured out how to fix this problem. Centurion, you made me tap into my magic in real time and everybody got a chance to witness it. Thank you, my brother. And as we continue, um, one of the things you said, uh, well, let me ask you this. We're talking about chakras. These are energy centers. Um, there's so many different ways people explain chakras. Um, and I don't even know if that's the proper word that you use. I think you may use a different word. What word do you use? And what Westerners use chakras. What word do you use? Well, I use I, I use the word chakras, uh -huh. you know, when I'm speaking uh, about the, the yogic system. But when I'm speaking about the kamitic system, I use the word nete, uh, uh, um, neteru. Uh -huh. You see that? What we call nature or neteru in kamit, the Hindus call chakras in their system, uh -huh. but nuances, you know, that make them make the understanding different. So chakras are the gods? Excuse me? Chakras are the gods? Ain't The neterus, ain't that the gods in ancient Egypt? Well, if you use the word gods, you know, you or have deities, to... Deities, or you, let me use deities. Or de if gods or deities, you have to free yourself of Western, you know, uh, interpretation of what a deity is. Yeah. And what a god is. Yeah. You see, because what the Westerner means by gods and deities, you know, they use that word to translate. You see that, what we call nature and netero. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. see that? Mm -hmm. So I would not use the word gods and deities, you see, for the chakras or the neterus, but that's those are Western translation that comes with the Western baggage or misinterpretation, misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So are these um, some, how would you describe these energy centers in our body using the English language? How can we describe these energy, 14 energy centers that you speak of? Well, I use I use the ancient the the the, the word I, I use the Hindu word chakras, okay. Well, not a word, but a description. Like some people describe them as vortices, circles. What what exactly energy centers? They what exactly are, they are, are they? Are, what are their purpose? They're metaphysical centers. Uh huh. In our body, we have metaphysical energies, you know, throughout our body, throughout our being. Mm -hmm. Okay, and these are these are centers that modulate and 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 oversee and control you know, the flow and function of metaphysical energies within us. Within, okay. Don't forget okay. that, you see, our body's made up of atoms and molecules, mm -hmm. but molecules and atoms are broken down into smaller energy waves and particles that goes all the way down, you know, to subatomic sub energies and subatomic particles all the way down to quantum mm -hmm. factors. Mm -hmm. And once we go into the quantum level, Mm -hmm. Okay, that's where the what we call Nateru and chakras operate from. Ooh, okay. Ooh, interesting. So this is this is subatomic stuff that we're talking about. Okay, that's just, you know what somebody uh, a couple of uh, I've heard a couple of people say uh, when people like let's say um, when people get possessed or um, de demonic possession or whatever things like that, they say the way these entities come through your body is through the chakras. The chakras is the entry point for these entities to come through you. What's your thoughts on that, my brother? Well, first of all, the majority of people who are so-called possessed by demons are just simply having, you know, um, mental imbalances mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That, that require, you know, um, medi you know, medication, herbs, change of diet, you know, and th you know, and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Okay, the majority. For example, you know, one of the, 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 the medieval Western names for mental disorders, okay, it was insanity. Mm -hmm. The word insanity means that there's a lack of sanitation within you. Mm. So these people were giving enemas and fasted, 
for wow. many days. And once the body was cleansed, you know, the bouts of so-called insanity, schizophrenia yeah. and or demonic possession went away. Lack so of sanitation. Was, that I like that. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, in the sanitation. Yeah, the, the yeah. that was a lot of these, you know, mental deviation and so-called possession is a result of you know auto intoxication, intoxication from you know things from the outside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, like, the, you can go the the parts that you places that you can go in the world. Mm -hmm. that don't have much of a te uh, knowledge of technology where everything that happens to you, physical and psychological, they ascribe to some demon or something of that nature. Yeah. This is the 21st century. We have to, <laughs> you know, retool our understanding of these things. Yeah. I like your approach, Elder. I like your approach. <laughs> I like your approach to this. I like. Well, uh, I've been working on it for over 50 years now. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, let me ask you this. All right, in terms of chakras, um, I would say because a lot of people, when it comes to spiritual topics, a lot of people talk about trauma and things of that nature. Um, four out of five women I've ever had a deep conversation with and have really conversed with, they were impacted by sexual molestation as a child, like literally four out of five. Like, it's like once in a while, one wasn't. If I, you know, if you really get to talking to them and know them, how would something like that, if we have a society with the divine feminine where four out of five was impacted by sexual molestation, how does that impact the chakras? What does that do to the chakras that happened to them as a child? What happens to their chakras by the time they become an adult? Well, first of all, understand that this, what we call the chakras in Western language and science is your psyche. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So the, the you know, when you approach the knowledge of the psyche, you know, uh, from the perspective of chakras, then you have... 14, you know, well-documented and well-known faculties of the spirit and this and the mind that you can um, draw mm -hmm. on the, you know, um, this, that you can leverage techniques for restoring balance. You see that in, in the, um, you know, you can restore the well-being of these women as well as to bring into society Okay, because that, you know, because the, the men who commit those, you know, those, you know, those, um, those cruel things, I don't want to demonize, but it's, it's cruel. Okay, they're also psychologically, you know, un, uh, unbalanced. And the thing is, is a, a chakra based therapeutic system would prevent society from going off the rails in that way and providing means for people to recover from, you know, sexual trauma or it is war, the trauma from war, the PTSD from war, or, you know, abuse by the authorities, whatever it is that, that leaves, you know, post-traumatic, you know, stress state. As a matter of fact, I wrote a book called, you know, uh, Stress Free for Life. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. where I give meditations and dietary suggestions and supplements where people can remove, you know, the, the re remaining stress that follows different traumatic situations. You see that? Yeah. So yeah. people who have been traumatized in that manner, they, 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 they need a re-education about, you know, their, their, their true identity, their self-image, you know they need to they need to help change the way they think about life and about things, and then they need to uh, use meditation, because meditation is the way to get into the psyche to fix what has gone wrong. Mm -hmm. You see that? Mm -hmm. If you do not meditate to go deep into your subconscious to fix what has gone wrong, you are going to just be trying to uh, talk. Right. You know, help people with with positive thinking. That's not that's not enough. Is you got to go into the subconscious. Let me ask you this, brother. Since you're so well studied, 
uh, and you talked about the subatomic world. So you're familiar with quantum physics and you're familiar with the quantum world. And the quantum world says consciousness creates reality. The, the quantum world does not say subconsciousness creates reality. They say consciousness creates reality. My thing is, what about the subconscious? What does if, if we have a conscious and they're saying conscious creates a reality? Uh, talk to me about the subconscious based on your studies. What is the sub? What did the ancestors in antiquity have to say about the subquant subconscious instead of because we hear about the conscious creating reality according to quantum physics? So talk to me about subconscious according to the ancestors in antiquity. Reality. What we call reality is something that occurs on different levels. Yeah. And the subconscious is the lowest and the fundamental level of reality. Mm -hmm. You see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. And consciousness can and has the power to, to impact the subconscious because the, the, the subconscious is not self, self uh, automated. You see that it has to be all it has to be put in set in motion by consciousness. Right. Okay. But okay. the consciousness, the consciousness has to, you know, uh, meet the subconscious on the, the level of the subconscious. Yes. You see that Con what we call consciousness can operate on all levels of reality, but the subconscious has to remain subconscious to be subconscious. You, you, you're following that, right? Oh, okay. 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 Are you with me here? I'm yes, not losing you, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Sir. So, you know, so the, the the art and science of meditation is to take your consciousness into the depths of your soul, mm. the depths of your spirit, mm. because that's the foundation of reality. Yeah, yeah. Man. When you, Man. you, you say you're a musician, what instrument do you play? Piano. Yeah, okay, I'm a pianist also. Mm. You know, I went to, I uh, was a piano major through um, my, my school, uh, school of music. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Now, when you, when you practice something over and over and over, you, what, what you're doing is that you are transmitting, you know, what you know on a conscious level into the, your psyche, the subconscious within you. Okay. So that once you get to the point where you can play something, execute something accurately, and and faster than you can think sub, uh, consciously is because you have you have transformed you have you have you have transmitted that conscious knowledge into your subconscious what we what we incorrectly call muscle memory. So muscle memory is subconscious. That's correct. Oh, let's go! Oh, yes, let's go! Okay. Yeah. <laughs> muscle memory is the subconscious. Okay, come on. Okay, brother. And a good musical performance is a marriage between, you know, conscious effort and subconscious ac action. You see that? But it has to be mostly subconscious than conscious. Because the subconscious can think faster than consciousness. And all the most accurate, the most complex, you know, uh, maneuvering is carried out by the subconscious itself. But consciousness has to program it. Does consciousness? I'm, okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Does consciousness do any action, or is all action subconscious? And all conscious do is programming. Conscious is the computer programming, and subconscious is the does all the action. Is that how it works? What? How does this that work? is correct? You see, in other words, you you use consciousness to learn how to walk. And once you learn how to walk, you walk subconsciously without thinking about it. Subconscious, yeah. Yeah. Damn, brother. Where you been at, man? Where you been at all these years, man? Where you been? I know you been around. I'm just messing with you. Wait, waiting for you. Oh, <laughs> I, I like that response. Woo, this brother's fire, man. You know I got to get you back on. We, we, we only got about 20 more minutes, but I got to get you back on here again. You know that, right? Yes, sir. Got to get you back on. Let me ask you this, a personal question that you 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 are obviously a, a, a elder full of wisdom, I want to ask this to you. When I meditate a lot, like let's say, just since I was about 20 years old, I noticed this. I didn't know how to articulate it, but I noticed it. Then eventually I was like, why do I do this? Um, le like, let's say I'm, I'm in my home or my apartment or wherever. If I meditate, I would always walk counterclockwise. 
So you have 12, you have clockwise and you have counterclockwise. But I always seem to walk counterclockwise. It wasn't a conscious thought put into it. It was just a subconscious action since we're talking about subconscious action. But to this day, I still notice when I meditate and I'm really deep in thought, I'm rubbing my hands. I don't know what that's about. I will walk counterclockwise. Is there any explanation from your teachers that you could tell me about that, my brother? Have you noticed that in a horse race, the, the race is counterclockwise too, right? I didn't know that. No, I don't watch. No, 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 no. I didn't know that. Okay, when you watch, okay, when you watch athletes racing, you know, running uh -huh. the speed and yeah, you know, it's counterclockwise also. Oh, oh, the um, like Hussein Bolt and all of them. It's all counterclockwise. I didn't know that. Come on, man. God damn it. Oh my God. I did not know that, my brother. Wow. Talk, explain, please explain that. I never put two and two together. Please explain that. Yeah, because you're right. They be like, do, 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 do. yeah, you're right. Explain that That's to me. Please. You please. see, our body, our body and our mind and our psyche, right? Uh huh. The psyche, the soul, the what we call the soul, the psyche. Uh -huh. Okay, is um, operates on various electromagnetic levels in a cyclical uh -huh. manner, uh -huh. and that cyclical rotation goes counterclockwise. Okay, you see that? Uh -huh. Okay, uh -huh. and the same thing happens with the Earth with its movement around its axis uh -huh. and around the Sun. Uh -huh. It goes counterclockwise as well. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the Earth itself turns. You know, clockwise, but you know the reference makes it look counterclockwise, and the, and the inner part within us tries to keep up with maintain that relationship. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Listen, before we continue, they're begging for your contact information. <laughs> Tell the people. I know you got a program that's going on. I think it's starting tomorrow, and I know you got a lot going on. Shekum, shekum. Tell, tell them your contact information before we continue and uh, wrap up the show in about 10 minutes, my brother, please. Okay, so my website, they can contact me through my website, which is Kamitic Legacy. That's K-A-M-I-T-L-E-G-A-C-Y, KamiticLegacy.com. Kamitic, K-A-M-I-T-I-C, Kamitic Legacy, L-E-G-A-C-Y.com. Yeah. And that way you can, um, you know, learn more about what we're speaking about, the winter solstice and so on. <clears throat> and they want to know. Lot to unpack yeah. here, right? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, my brother. Go ahead, go ahead. I know you got more to, yeah, go ahead. And tell them about your program, because you got a program. Tell them about that. What's this? Well, the, the program, you know, like I said earlier, that, you know, when people, you know, celebrate the new year, what it is, December 25th, the last day, the, 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 the first day following the end of the solstice mm -hmm. <clears throat> or January the 1st, you know, there's this general consensus that this is a time for you to make pledges to be a better person, to have more wealth, to be healthier, to improve your relationships, okay, mm -hmm. to, to uh, go for that great thing that you know deep inside of you, you can accomplish, mm -hmm. but you cannot, you cannot give the mandate to your psyche to execute that pledge, mm. that vision, that mission. You mm. see that you need to, you know, have a meditation program that is based on the understanding of the mind and the psyche and the spirit, because those are the inner faculties that are responsible for your accomplishments in this world. That, you know, not doing this is why people say that, you know, every year they pledge for a better life, but they do not keep up with their pledges. Mm -hmm. You see, the thing is, is that when you pledge, you have to ask the question, who am I pledging to? Who am I being accountable to? You see that? Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is that you need a, you need a meditation system that, that puts you in touch with the greatest source of success in the world, which is God, the Supreme Being. Mm -hmm. You see that? Mm -hmm. It's not enough for you to say, I believe in Supreme Being. There are certain, you know, uh, requirements that you must meet, you know, say, in order to get help from God. Mm -hmm. So I put a course together where people can 
you know, establish a very deep and strong connection with God and how to purify their psyche, you know, their chakras, you know, which are their power and energy centers, because nothing happens in this universe without energy. Mm. But you see, your, your, your energy centers become clogged up, you see, by emotionality and, and the wrong and, and nurturing the wrong emotions and things of that nature. So, mm. um, so have a course that starts tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Okay, the sooner people start it, the better. But they have up until you know the beginning of February to start the program. It's a twenty-one. Well, it's a it's, it's a it, it's a monthly you know program. You do it for three months. But if you only get it in for one month of the three months of the winter, you will get good results. Hey man, I'm gonna tell you. I'm definitely going to be binging. You know how people binge on Netflix and these shows? I'm going to be binging on your material for the next couple of days, brother. I'm very interested in more of what you have to say. Um, I, I, I mean, you, you said some amazing things this interview. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, my brother. So maybe I should put this on the screen. Let me ask you this. Because I'm 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 loving this this I I'm loving what you're saying about uh, the 14 chakras and explaining the invasion that happened and you know the uh, certain chakras being left out and why they were left out. So listen, round there for our men in Western culture, seven chakras represent. You can hear me, right, brother? I'm hearing you. Yes, sir. I need you to listen to this now, my brother, because it's gonna get good. <laughs> Root, sacral, 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 solar plexus, heart, throat, third eye, crown. That's the seven chakras that we were taught. If we have 14, can you please tell us what the 14 chakras represent, my brother? Well, nine of the 14 chakras are your spiritual faculties. Got that? Yes, sir. Five, the other five are your psychical faculties. The five, the five psychical faculties execute your plans, your projects, your desires, your will, and so forth. Mm -hmm. The nine spiritual chakras, mm -hmm. you know, two of them are the dwelling places of your, of, of your consciousness. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the other seven of them, spiritual seven chakras, you know, are the means to which you communicate with God and 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 regulate the funk, the behavior and, and uh, of the five psychical faculties. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You see that mm -hmm. the five the five psychical faculties take, for example, the lowest one, the, the so-called sacral chakra, the swadhisthana. Mm -hmm. That's a source of fear. Mm. And fear is the foundation of all your negative emotions. Right. So if you do not purify and, and you know, that chakra, if you do not regulate it, your life will be dominated by fear and the anger and worry that follows fear. You see that? Mm -hmm. So the question is, how do you regulate and, and make that sort of standard chakra do good things for you? Because it's also the source of your psychical power. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. You... Fix your, the problems with the Swadhisthana chakra, the, the so called sacral or sexual chakra. In other words, if you don't fix that chakra, you will be controlled by lust, for example, by greed, mm -hmm. okay, by the pleasure principle, and so on. Mm -hmm. And the way to, to purify that chakra is through the, the, the other nine spiritual chakras. Are you with me? Yes, sir. In other words, for example, one of the nine chakras that, that were left out of the so-called seven chakras is the Guru Chakra. Mm -hmm. And the Guru Chakra, is the mantra is, is Hung, H-U-N-G. And once you awaken that chakra, you know, you will be, it's a portal for you to receive guidance directly from God. Mm -hmm. see, that's called intuition. Mm -hmm. If you don't live by intuition, then you live by animal instinct. Yes, sir. So you have these two inner sources of guidance intuition which is divine and spiritual or instinctive which is animalistic you know and human mm -hmm. so if you want to escape the instinctive part of your being 
and awaken the intuitive part of your being, you have to work with the other nine chakras that were left out. Take, for example, the Manipura, so-called solar plexus, okay? Mm -hmm. That's the chakra that is responsible for the brutality and war and the, tes the, the testosterone gone wild in men. Mm -hmm. When that Manipura chakra, you know, the, the word Manipura, so-called solar plexus, mm -hmm. okay? Mani, okay, mm -hmm. means, you know, um, jewels, yes. you know, riches, wealth. And mm -hmm. Pura means a city, a place. So the Manipura chakra is a chakra that when it is activated, it guides you to accumulate riches, mundane riches in the world. You see that? Yes. But when you don't, when you, uh, when you, if you awaken that chakra without awakening the other nine spiritual chakras, you will then use all kind of, you know, illegal means to accumulate that wealth. You see mm -hmm. that, meaning that the, the five lower chakras of the so-called seven chakra system corresponds to your animalistic nature. Right. But they're also the source of your psychical power. Yes. Hey, okay. Rob, my brother, what's the difference between me meditating and let's say me entering a trance state, tapping into the higher dimensions through meditation, just meditation, and me tapping into these higher states by using mushrooms, ayahuasca, let's say marijuana, uh, different substances that some people call bad, some people call good, it's subjective, but some people use these substances to tap into these higher states. Some people sit on their ass and just tap into these higher states by sitting on their couch and meditating in a certain position. What's the difference on the psyche, the body, and the soul, my brother? Okay, first of all, all of these uh, drugs that you mentioned are, are secreted by the brain itself. Is that clear to you? The yeah. opioids yes. and all of these yes, drugs are secreted by your own brain. Yes, sir. You see that? Mm -hmm. So it is safer for you to learn to meditate, okay, in a manner <clears throat> where your brain and your, ner your nervous system produces and secretes these drugs to bring about these states because once the body secretes it then the body can control it and harmonize it and so forth because you know every every chemical within you has an antagonistic chemical uh -huh. you see that the body is able to oppose and maintain the balance and so forth right. when you bring the the drug from the outside then the the regulatory you know system in the in the brain you mm -hmm. know um goes out of what cannot handle it mm -hmm. and that is why some people you know lose control mm -hmm. of themselves when they right. when they uh make the effort to attain these these trance states through the use of these you know uh chemicals right you right see that. definitely okay and the thing is, is that okay, the reason that most people do not get to these levels with meditation is that you have to learn to meditate with a different mantra. It's just not simply sit down quietly. That's mm -hmm. not meditation. Oh. Yeah, you have to breathe a certain way, a yeah. certain rate. You know, a certain. You have to breathe a certain way through the lower diaphragm. Okay. Right. A certain pace, yeah. and then with certain sounds. Yeah. And then sometimes a certain you know, uh, colors, okay? Ooh. Certain, you know, uh, aromatherapy, you know, oils and so forth. Yeah. So it's just not saying that sitting down. People think that meditation is just sitting down quietly. No, it's the whole science behind it. So but you, you want to be safe. I know people who have fried their brains off with these <laughs> drugs, you, just, you know, the, the mushrooms yeah. and things of that nature and so on. You take, for example, the American Indians, the Hopis and so forth. Yeah. Chile Kauai and so forth. They use these mushrooms, whatever, but not everybody in the nation uses it. Only the shamans who are trained, you know, and know how to use it and how to neutralize it with other herbs. Let's let's take a a, a simple example. For example, mm. you know, coffee, you know, is very is very useful, you know, uh, to help energize the brain for intellectual work or whatever, mm -hmm. but it can also, you know, overstimulate you 
and create behavioral problems and sleep problems that can affect your health and things like nature. Mm -hmm. So people who, you know, advocate coffee also know that you can use chamomile, for example, to mm -hmm. neutralize and detoxify the coffee from your system. Mm -hmm. Or a homeopathy called no mm -hmm. So every yang has its yin, every yin has its yang, every substance has its antagonist. And so using these these drugs, you know, for for healing purposes and so forth must be done with the understanding, with the knowledge of the antagonist so that you can, you know, set things in order if you went too far. And the problem is that most people you know, experimenting with the mushrooms and so forth, they don't know what the heck they're doing. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately. You know that. Unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess I got two more questions for you. For yes, sir. You. In terms of tapping into certain chakras, you talking about us working on a bio clock. You know, we hear about the circadian rhythm. Us, we're supposed to eat at a certain time, go to sleep at a certain time to get the optimum level of sleep. I've heard you talk about that. In terms of, like, let's say I, my heart chakra, humanity is suffering from not being able to tap into their heart. You seeing the way things are. Is there a certain time of the day that the heart chakra is most active where humanity could say, oh, it's such and such time. I need to focus on my heart chakra so we could become a better species. Does it work like that, my brother? It doesn't work like that. For you to fix your heart chakra, which is called the, the anahata, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So you can learn to be um, function in a very harmonious manner with your fellow woman and fellow man, mm -hmm. takes at least, the, at the very least, a three month meditation course. Wow. It's not something that you're going to put in place by observing some hey. mantra or, or affirmation at a particular time of the day. So we, we're living at a time when people, you know, have trivialized these ancient teachings and think that they are going to, you know, um, help people with these affirmations that you repeat, you know, at different times of the day, you know, for a minute or two. You know, these are people who are trying to make money and fame for themselves. Let me Our spirituality is much more complex than psychology. You know, if you study with me, you will be enrolling in a, you know, a, 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 a course that goes from, uh, let's say, the 12th grade in high school to a PhD. Let me ask you this. Last thing I want to ask you, Elder. What is it about, you said 90 day meditation course. What is it about 90 days? You get a job, they say, hey, you're on probation for 90 days. And a lot of people, they have to behave for 90 days. And if they can make it past 90 days, they get the job. What is the science behind around uh, 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 90 days where after you make it do something for 90 days, you seem like you're, 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 you're proficient in it, you're expert on it, or you're just, you know, you're able to really do it. What is it about this 90 day period, my brother? Because behavioral change requires, you know, certain um, brain centers to process the information. Yeah. You, that you can uh, think that you're proficient in something because you have not come across a life situation, a life or crossroad that challenges you, okay? that truly challenges you. Right. You see that? Right. And the thing is, is that uh, not, not everything is, nobody, nobody ever says that you need 90 days, but for certain things you need, you know, 90 days because the the, the, the cycle of, 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 of uh, achievement, of goal realization, you know, is based in four quarters of the year. And there are three months in every quarter. You see that, meaning the, 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 the Swadhisthana chakra governs the first 90 days of the oh. year. The Anahata, the next 90 days of the year. The Manipura, along with the uh, Herit, the next 90 days. Uh -huh. And the Mulahara, the next 90 Mizula. days. And the Vishuddha is, you know, is the regulator that, uh, that enables the, 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 the movement from one chakra 
cultivation of one chakra into the other. And you know, I'm purifies and so on. So the thing is, is that the 90 day behavioral change thing has to do with the 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 period where each chakra oversees. You see that because you have these five chakras, these five psychical chakras, and each one of them governs 90, 90 days of the year. Interesting, very interesting. 90, 180. 270 and 360. Right there. That's that's okay. and the thing is if you study the human gestation period, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. I think it's 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 three times 90 days cycle. Yeah. The woman carries the child in her, you know, in the womb. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. That you know the, the when you study spirituality and, and esoteric sciences, you find you wanna you you're gonna come going to come across a doctrine of what they call sacred numbers and sacred yeah. geometry. Yeah, yeah. Because you see, God creates the world, you know, in a, you know, scientific, according to scientific principles. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the scientific world is controlled by mathematics and geometry. Yes, sir. You yes, see sir. that? Yes, sir. So, so do not be surprised when you find that certain things conform to certain, you know, numerical periods and cycles and geometric and algebraic, you know, uh, relationships. Hey, listen, Elder, Raul Nefar, man, Shechem, Shechem. <laughs> listen, man, I had a great time tonight. Amazing. Before you get out of here, one more time, leave the people your contact information, your website, and your program, anything you got coming up, programs, anything. Every Everybody's going to sign up to everything, brother. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you know that. We have uh, 1,900 people right now. We got 1,900 people in here right now. Everybody's going to sign up to everything you got going on, brother. You absolutely do that. You did a magnificent job. Thank you for having you on here. Go ahead, brother. Okay. Thank you so much. This is a I just want to leave the audience to understand that this is the time of the year when your psyche, you know, is ready to accept the commands for your vision your missions, for you to reset your life, for you to, you know, to declare to your psyche to make you wealthier, healthier, a better person, for you to go after your spiritual goals, your mundane goals, okay? Your psyche will not be receptive, you know, past March the 21st. That's what, you know, we move into another period. That's the, that's the spring equinox period. And you have three months to do that work. Then uh, you, you have the the, 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 the the summer solstice on June the 21st, which is 180 degrees from the winter solstice. So take advantage of the next three um, months, starting best as best as possible, as, early, as soon as possible, to work on uh, giving direction to your psyche to change your life, to improve your life. And I have a course that will enable you to do that because you just cannot write on a piece of paper a pledge and burn it or throw it in the garbage or just simply, you know, uh, say a few words because cocks grow into heavens, you know, do not make the sun come up. You have to meditate, you know, with a program. Mm. And you will, and, and, and I, I created one, you know, but we've been doing it, but my people have been doing it for 45 years now. Wow. You see that. And you can come to Kamitic Legacy. That's K A M I T I C. That's Kamitic mm -hmm. Legacy. L E G A C Y. Kamitic Legacy.com. And that where you can get more information about this course, you see, and so you can help yourself. Hey, once again, thank you, my brother. I appreciate it. Um, I'm, I'm going to talk to you soon because I want to get you on here sometime early in the new year again. And um, I can't thank you enough. It's been magnificent. I totally enjoyed myself. I learned so much tonight. Family, thank you. Um, a lot of y'all, we had about 2,000 people in here tonight. Thank you for everybody for joining us, tuning in. This is Brother Rich. Shekamun, Shekam, Ra, Un, Nefa, Amen. His info is also in the description. We signing out, family. See you next time. Peace. Thank you so much. Peace, Thanks for having me. Yes, sir. Peace, my brother.